Hi, I'm Casey Durango of Go Keto with Casey. And thank you for allowing me into your Saturday. And um, if you can let me know that you can see and hear me, that is always appreciated. Um, it is Saturday noon and the 12th of January, 2019. So I, there's a big storm passing through the United States. I hope you're safe and sound. And thank you for um, showing up, those of you who are here. And H. Green, hi, hello from Tennessee. This is the first time watching you live. Thank you very much. Um, I just wanna have a little discussion about, not a little discussion, an open discussion about um, the ketogenic diet and how I've experienced it and how I've lost 97.4 pounds since starting it, how you might be able to lose weight, improve your health, and regain control of your lives. Thank you. My camera's a little off here. Different perspective. I just did this on Facebook, and everything's different all the time. Every time I do something, it turns out a little bit different. Um, hey, Shell. Good morning. So um, thank you very much, Patty, for letting me know the video and sound are good. Always a, always a struggle. Aloha, Quito in Hawaii. Um, you know what? I've just purchased a not to be not to make sweeping sweeping generalities, keto in Hawaii. Do you eat spam? Because I know spam is very popular in Hawaii. And I just bought a bunch of spam at Costco. It was on sale. And I gotta tell you, I really like it. Um so this is just an open discussion. For those of you who are new to the protocol. I, all I can do is tell you my experience. I am not a medical provider. I'm not a researcher. I'm just a well-educated, intelligent, highly motivated former fatty. One of these days, I will learn how to share my screen and show you some before photos. Um, but I can't do that the way I have this live set up right now. If you go to my blog, caseydurango.com, you can just look under the before photos. But um, I'm 115 pounds off of my heaviest. And 97.4 off since I started keto. And um, 5'1". So that's a lot of weight for every inch of vertical height. And I've been heavy for a really long time, 30 years. And I've given up on losing weight. I didn't want to take insulin for type 2 diabetes, which is how I got into this. So um, I'm very much like all of you. Someone who maybe publicly or privately struggled with weight and feelings of failure and depression and joint pain and all the things that come along with this. So anywho, um, I will, here's what I'd like to do. Uh, there's a lot of collective wisdom whenever, you know, whenever a bunch of folks interested in the ketogenic diet get together. So if anyone has a question for me, Please ask me anything. Um, I will share anything that I can. And if I if it's something that I don't share, I'll tell you, I don't share that. So with that having been said, let me turn. Oh, H. Green asks, what are your thoughts on drinking water? I drink lots of keto-friendly beverages, but not so much water. Just curious. And down 6.2 pounds in two weeks. Congratulations. I rarely drink just plain water. My husband doesn't care for water. Um, even when he goes on, and my husband's never had a weight issue, my lovely Nate, but uh, even when he goes on extended um, rides on his bicycle, he t he doesn't take water. He likes something like Crystal Light or something because he doesn't love water. I just drink liquid. You know, everything that's liquid has a base in water. So if it's Crystal Light or tea or whatever, I just, right now, this is what I'm drinking. And it is a glass filled to brimming with ice cubes, diet tonic water, and a splash of diet cranberry with a squeeze of lime. I'm talking a lot today, so that helps keep my whistle wet. Hi from Vancouver. Um, okay, it is snowy in St. Louis. Yeah, we're probably going to not get any of that. They, they were calling for a little bit of snow this weekend for us, but I'm in, in central North Carolina, in the Piedmont. And we'll probably get some rain and or ice, which is really bad. Um, Debbie 
Liddell writes, if you have a day or days you aren't hungry and you don't eat many calories, can it cause metabolism to slow down? Slowing of metabolism is something that particularly food manufacturers want you to be concerned about. So you'll keep eating food. Metabolism slows down with age. If you weigh less than you used to, it slows down. It, but that's good. It's, it's in keeping with your needs. So no, if don't eat if you're not hungry. I haven't eaten today yet. It's um, it's twelve oh five. I haven't eaten yesterday. I ate a goodly amount. I was hungry. I woke up hungry. Actual hunger, not not peckish, not not kind of no. And I had a, a lovely breakfast. My husband prepared for me. But you know we're not machines. So we're not, we're, we're not mechanical devices. So the idea that we would have the same level of hunger and the same need for fuel every day, like clockwork, is illogical. So no, don't worry about it. Your, body, your body's going to burn and, and metabolisms change and they slow down. There's nothing, there's nothing to fear on that. Snowing in Ohio right now, two to three inches so far, oh boy. So that's one reason I'm in here instead of my kitchen in front of our fire. And over there is Atticus sleeping. Look at him. That's what Atticus does. He sleeps all day. He's 15 years old. He's entitled. Um, Jennifer Angus asks, I love the name. Is that your actual name? Because you're asking thoughts on carnivore. Is your name Angus? I love that. Um, I am kind of not because philosophically or any other reason. I eat very few vegetables. I ate some yesterday. I ate some cabbage yesterday. But I don't eat that many vegetables. So I'm kind of a de facto carnivore. But but not, again, for philosophy or anything else. Everyone should follow what makes sense for them. For me, I eat much less food than I used to in general. Excuse me. The carbonation is repeating on me. Um, I eat less than I even ate a year ago. So the food I'm going to consume is going to default towards fatty sources of protein. And if I stop when I'm satiated, then I'm just done. I'm not anti-vegetable, I just don't need them. And keep in mind, carbohydrate, vegetables, not an essential nutrient. What does that mean, not an essential nutrient? Means that you don't have to consume them. Your body can create whatever benefit you would get from carbohydrate itself. Now, fat and protein are essential. The amino acids present in fat and protein cannot be manufactured by our bodies. We must consume them. So, difference there. Um, the political moly, the pa Paola, Paolita moly, Right, so what a cutie. I assume you're talking about Atticus and not me. Um, I am looking down at questions. Greetings from Germany. Thank you for the inspiration. Have you um, have been living a ketogenic lifestyle since October and have lost 30 pounds and, and I'm also practically off metformin. Congratulations. Lorraine, are you a native German speaker? Are you an American transplanted? The reason I ask is because... Um, there's a uh, one of our uh, patrons, and I am going to give a plug for patreon.com slash go keto with Casey, where the bulk of my um, my content is created for this closed group. But one of my patrons is Kimmy from Germany, and she actually has a Facebook group, if I can find it. Let's see if I can pronounce this. You're going to laugh at me. You might laugh at me. Hold, please. Oh, now I don't see it. it I, I won't be able to pronounce it. But anyway, it's look up ketogenic with Casey in German. And she has a support group there that she has started. Debbie Lyman writes, I've been following your advice for six months and I feel better than I have in years plus down 50 pounds. Holy guacamole. That's great. By the way, this is not my advice. I didn't make this up. I didn't make this up. 
this is not a, I, the, this has been around a really long time. Pre-Atkins. This goes back to at least William Banting. An English undertaker in 1863. As a matter of fact, in South Africa, the ketogenic diet is called the Banting diet. It is just, you know, restrict your carbohydrate intake to the point where your liver is not pushing out glucose for fuel. It will switch to burning fat for fuel, which is really the way we were designed, which is why we feel so much better when we're doing it. <laughs> yes, Atticus, be your cute too. Um, A.B. writes, hi, Casey. Don't have any questions about keto. Just love watching. Well, thank you very much. Your name is Angus. I love that. And you're asking about carnivore. Danielle Sheree Baldwin Spooner, my husband and I have a Facebook group, Keto Lifestyle. Congratulations. And Promethea79, hi, I'm in Indiana. It's also snowing. This is a big one. They say I think 1,600 miles wide is just cutting a swath. The Northeast apparently is going to be spared this time. Uh, Peg Page writes, I'm down 50 pounds in 230 days. Mm. The Jillian Michaels interview this week infuriated me. You know what? It didn't infuriate me for one thing. I didn't watch it. Uh, it clearly, obviously, is geared towards ginning up her name and driving traffic to her site. That's, but beyond, forget that. I, I really think the people who are getting all verklempt about it and screaming about her are doing the same thing. They're just trying to gin up their own name recognition. But don't listen to people. Why do I care what Jillian Michael says about anything? Anything. Anything. I'm not going to listen to her or any other television personality. You know who? You know who I listen to? My body. Of course, it's not a who, it's an it. But I listen to my body. If Jillian Michaels went on and said, you know what? It's been proven that gravity does not hold us on the face of the earth. What am I going to listen to her about that? I know that gravity holds us on the face of the earth. Ridiculous. And I'm not going to give her any more press than she needs. Not that anyone's listening to me. I do not. I, I'm not. No one's listening to my rebuttal about it. But I'm not going to listen to her. I'm not going to listen to Oprah Winfrey about weight management. There are many people who are in the keto community. I don't listen to them about weight management, health management. I don't listen to them. I listen to my body. If all of these people combined said to me, said, because they're not talking to me, mm, make sure that you eat at least one half gallon of pickles a day. Because it's now, you know, studies have been showing that a half a gallon of pickles will eat. Well, and if I try to eat a half gallon of pickles and found it made me sick, I'm not going to listen to them. It's all, it's commerce. Just listen to your body. There's not one thing you need to buy. There's not one product that will help you. There's not an amount of fat you have to eat. Keep your carbs 20 grams or fewer a day, total, not net. Eat fatty sources of protein. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Stop when you're satiated. That's it. Mary T writes, sadly, I have a friend with type 2 diabetes that changed her mind about keto after the Jillian interview. All I can say about that is anyone who's listening to a television personality about nutrition, they are coming up with an excuse to not do what they know is best for them. I don't listen to Dr. Oz either, even if he says keto is the way to go, because he's just, he's just following whatever the last 12 hours said was the buzzword. Okay, so there. Suzanne Brandon writes, I've reached a plateau. I'm eating 20 grams or less a day of carbs. I'm eating twice a day. Okay, I don't care how often you're eating a day. Are you eating only when you're hungry? Are you eating? Here's what I would do when I talk to people, because I do, one-to-one. -one. And they say, I'm... Now, first of all, 
around Gokita with Casey, we don't call her the plateau, we call her the hover. Um, you're hovering, hovering in, until the next new low. But if you have not lost any fractions of a pound or any fractions of an inch, fractions of an inch, for four weeks, okay, start asking yourself some questions. The questions I ask, first of all, are you burning fat for fuel? Now, you don't have to test for this if you don't want to, but a really inexpensive way, an effective way, is to use the urine strips, the keto sticks, as they're called. It's very simple. It's not measuring ketones, by the way. It's not measuring ketones. So if you are showing positive, you're not wasting ketones, you're not spilling over ketones. It's not measuring ketones. It's measuring acetoacetate, which is a byproduct of burning fat for fuel. And these strips are effective for most people most of the time. But you don't have to test, you know, if you're not having hunger and everything. If you feel like you're in ketosis, burning fat for fuel, and you have not lost any fractions of a pound or fractions of an inch for four weeks at least, then ask yourself this. So you're burning fat for fuel. That's great. Remember, this is not a weight loss diet. This is a fat burning diet. If you're over consuming dietary fat, what is that? That means loading up your coffee with oil and butter and cream and, you know, MCT. And that's dietary fat. If you're burning fat for fuel, that's great. If you're consuming the fat your body requires for its energy needs, then it's not going to tap into your onboard stores. If that's not the case, no, 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 no MCT, no fat bombs for me. I eat, just eat my nice fatty sources of protein and I don't. Are you eating more food than your body requires? That is kind of hard. Figuring out what actual hunger is. Are you eating out of hunger or out of habit? I'm not a proponent of time-restricted eating. I find that arbitrary and silly. It makes no more sense to me to arbitrarily not eat if you're actually empty and hungry than it does to arbitrarily eat because it's breakfast time. So that's a question. But losing inches without losing weight is a true thing. Jay House in 1952. Casey, is it possible to overdo the amount of electrolyte drinks per day? I noticed my calves in the last few days are, are aching, thinking I may be overdoing the sodium. Um, Judy, uh, I don't do electrolyte drinks. If you have symptoms, uh, one thing, I don't treat symptoms that I don't have. I am prone to leg cramps. My husband, who's following the protocol, is not. Nighttime leg cramps. The first thing I do is increase my sodium intake, just sodium, not electrolyte drinks, just sodium. Because sodium is the queen of the electrolytes, queen of the minerals. As sodium goes, usually so go magnesium, potassium, calcium, all the ums. If you don't have sodium sensitive hypertension, about five grams a day. That's what you want to shoot for, kind of. And that is including the food you eat. So that can be a bullion cube, takes care of it. It's this is simple. One of the greatest things about this protocol is the solutions to most things are simple and inexpensive. I have never consumed an electrolyte drink. I increase my sodium. I don't even need to take bullion if I really want. I just put some kosher salt in something. Um, but I do because I'm still prone to nighttime leg cramps. And some people just are. I do take a slow release magnesium supplement. Mag 64 is the generic version of slow mag. I buy it at Amazon. If you go to my blog, it's an affiliate link. I get them five things at a time. I take three a day. Okie dokie. Let's see. Good morning from Wyoming. I bet it's cold there. Just started five days ago. Congratulations. How are you feeling? Right. So uh, in the palace. What am I drinking? I, I, I swear I'm going to make a hashtag Casey's Pink Drink. This is a glass of ice, mostly diet tonic water, a splash of diet cranberry juice, and a squeeze of lime. Because I do so much talking, I was talking before and I'll be talking after. It helps keep me um, my mouth right. Yeah. 
You know, Shell, I'm not even going to talk about this. People, it's just silly to me. Am I going to ask Kim Kardashian for her opinion on anything? She's a personality. Listen to my body. I'm not gonna, I'm not going to do it. I don't want to give them even any more credence. Carol Wallace, hey from the UK. <laughs> LG writes, um, really like the new filming location. The lighting is perfect. Thank you. I did this really because of the cold day, and I thought it might warm people up. I know a lot of the people are have snow. DYNG, uh, I put cream of tartar in orange juice at night for leg cramps. Works. Not sure what's in cream of tartar. That is a brand new one on me. But isn't it nice when a solution is cheap and does not require a prescription? Hello from Alabama. You know what people, some people recommend for leg cramps? The little packages of yellow mustard that you get at a fast food restaurant. You feel a leg cramp coming on? You And Judy writes, thank you, Casey, for electrolyte answer. Most definitely overdoing adding my pink salt to everything. Five grams, got it. Sarah Vowell writes, hello, beautiful people, background, uh, beautiful background, Casey. Lots of snow here in Denver. Oh, I bet. Casey Shea writes, hey, I've been taking Zoloft for a year and recently was told I have moderate depression. Any chance with keto, I can come off my depression uh, meds and out of depression. I'm three days in. I'm I'm not a medical provider, Casey with a K. I will tell you that I've spoken personally um, with um, and heard from several people who have not only come off of um, medications for depression, but also for anxiety. And there is there are a couple of case studies of people coming off for their psychotic meds. You need to do it works for you. I suffered from chronic clinical depression for a long time. I never took meds for it. I just suffered. I'll tell you that since I've started this, nope, my mood, and I chalk this up to body chemistry, not to losing weight because it's it alleviated immediately. Not, you know, of course you're depressed, you're fat. Not that, not that. I chalk it up to the reduction in, in insulin spikes and drops. Your insulin goes like this, trying to regulate your blood sugar. You eat, you eat carbohydrates, your liver pumps out glucose. We can't keep blood, you know, glucose in our blood. It's dangerous. So our pancreas produces insulin to pushes the glucose out. So you have this insulin surge and the glucose drops down and then, but your brain says, I need some more glucose because I'm burning glucose for fuel instead of ketones or fat for fuel. Get me some more glucose. So your brain tells you to eat more carbs. So you eat more carbs, there's more glucose. So your pancreas pushes out the insulin. So your insulin is doing this. And for me, I believe the side effect was terrible mood issues pickle juice like cramps i've heard that as well i've not used it but i've heard it susie towns asks, do you eat any time of day as long as you're hungry even night i do not believe nor do i follow time restricted eating for instance today i have not eaten yesterday morning i woke up hungry not just kind of peckish. I woke up hungry. So I ate a nice big breakfast. Then I, did I eat? Uh, I guess I ate something in the afternoon. Time-restricted eating makes no sense to me. I don't give up. I do what works for you. It just is illogical to me. Your body is going to need what it needs, and it's going to do what it's going to do. Do we practice time-restricted urination? Or are you going to say, oh, well, I can't urinate yet. I don't pee until 1 p.m. No, you got to pee, you got to pee. Some days you pee more. Some days you pee less. Same thing with bowel movements. 
Casey writes, my depression stems from the death of my parents. I appreciate you taking the time to answer with understanding. And Casey, I don't know, There, my understanding, I'm not a medical doctor, but I, I have access to people who will return my phone calls. You know, there's clinical depression and chronic depression, and there's acute depression. Acute depression coming on from specific events. And I'm sorry about the loss of your parents. Um, so, you know, listen to your doctor. Hey, gay. Insulin is so important. It can be the devil for mood swings. It can. But, you know, once your insulin is under control, everything else comes to fall. If sodium is the queen of the electrolytes, insulin is the queen of the hormones. Really, blood sugar is not the problem. Insulin resistance is the problem. Higher blood sugar is the consequence of insulin resistance. Kimchi. Oh, I love kimchi. Like a hot and spicy. Uh, Avalon writes, when you say you haven't eaten yet, does that mean no heavy cream and coffee? No, I have my cream on my coffee. Not chewing on my coffee. I haven't eaten solid food. Give me a break. I eat my cream on my coffee. Absolutely. I'm not trying to calorie restrict. This is not me. This, see, to me, I mean, I mean, no disrespect, Avalon, 8852. That's micromanaging. I just haven't eaten any solid food. But I'm going to tell you what, two teaspoons of cream in my coffee would not cut it if I was actually hungry. Dina Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Are tracking macros as important as everyone says? Some of you might know my answer to that and can share it. <gasps> Wanda! Hey, Wanda. No. As a matter of fact, I won't even, I try not to use that word. It's the M word. It's not part of the protocol. Here's the protocol. Keep your carbohydrate intake to 20 grams a day or fewer. That is not a percentage of total calories. It's grams. It's a number, not a percentage. Eat fatty sources of protein. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Stop when you're satiated. Bingo. Nothing about time-restricted eating. Nothing about pie charts. Nothing about percentages. Um, nothing about... Oh, I don't know. That's it. Wanda, how you doing, honey? You're down in Alabama. You getting any, uh, any weather? I really miss you. Miss you, Wanda. We really miss you. Melody Birch, I just found your channel. Love it. I am uh, I'm not a coffee drinker. I do keto hot chocolate. What do you think about sugar, alcohols, and diet sodas? Well, diet tonic water, diet cranberry are essentially the same as diet sodas. I have a case of oh, I meant to tell my husband to get some more Coke Zero. Probably too late. He's at Costco. Um let me text him. I have a uh, Coke Zero in my fridge right now. Sugar alcohols. If you're talking about the kind of things that show up in diet candies and some things, I don't pay any attention to them. The only thing I look at on the label is the number of grams of carbohydrate per serving. That's it. Dina writes, thanks, that was driving me crazy. Dina, do you speak Spanish by any chance? Because I, the reason I ask, um, I'm going to start a podcast, and I'm thinking of starting a second one in Spanish with my lovely mate, who is from Colombia, South America. I think a Spanish language podcast is right to do. Hey, Tia, it's been a while. Thank you for your chance. Really helps. I look forward to it. Thank you so much. Uh, Lisa M., how many times in the last six months have you had a craving for chips and salsa? After all this time, do you still have those days? No, no. Those. Here's the deal. People find it difficult to believe. If you don't eat something, you don't crave it. I thought for years that I could not do a low-carb diet because I said I cannot imagine giving up tortilla chips. Can't imagine it. I can't do it. And I couldn't until I did. And I will tell you, two weeks into it, my husband and I went to a, our favorite 
Mexican restaurant. He had his two or three baskets of tortilla chips. I not only wasn't tempted, I, I was disinterested. I was apathetic. So no, I've got, I had zero cravings for tortilla chips. I've been, oh, by the way, Tuesday, this past Tuesday, the 8th of January was my five-year anniversary in doing this. So to those who say it is unsustainable, I said, well, you're wrong. Um, you're Cuban. So I'm the Cubana. So I'm interested in trying to do a Spanish language uh, podcast. My husband is um, not someone who wants to be on camera, so we don't do videos. But I think podcasts might be okay. Here's what I'm thinking. I will do the speaking in Spanish. I have an affinity for language, so I learned to speak Spanish after he and I got married. Um, but I don't know that I would have every word correct, right? So if you say one word wrong, so he'd be there kind of as my real-time editor. Thank you guys for um, answering each other's questions. Can you make quito tortillas then bake them for chips? You know what, D? I don't want to do that. Here's another. You do what you want to do. People need to do what works for them. One thing, I don't want to make fake versions of the things that got me into the trouble in the first place. But here's the... To me, here's the deeper thing. Just like the thing about Jillian Michaels, the deeper answer is don't listen to an online personality, a television personality, a celebrity, somebody. Don't listen to anybody else. Don't listen. If I don't listen to my medical provider who was a little bit concerned when I showed up at a thing and I'd lost 25 pounds and told her what I was doing and she was concerned, if I'm not listening to her because I knew how my body felt, I'm not listening to anyone else, and certainly not a photoshopped, airbrushed, liposuctioned anybody. Anybody. But here's the other thing. I don't want to make fake versions of the food that got me in the problem in the first place, but the bigger story is stop thinking about food. Food is fuel. Food is not love. Food is not entertainment. It is not sport. It can be a distraction, but that doesn't mean it's a good thing. So no. Oh, Diane, thank you for the super chat. Thank you so much. That means that you don't know how much that means to me. Thank you. Um, and, and please ask a question because the whole point of super chat is you get to ask a question and it doesn't scroll past on my screen. So thank you. Other people are not the boss of me. By the way, getting in the t-shirts. If you go to my blog, go Keto with Casey. No, CaseyDurango.com. I do have swag. You don't have to purchase anything to be 100% successful at this protocol. But that having been said, as for fun items, I've got calendars, uh, which I've got a few left mugs. And my best-selling shirt was, food is not the boss of me. It's the only item I'm actually reordering. So those will be in soon. Food is not the boss of me. On keto, my brain fog clears. Inflammation decreases. Losing weight. Get those chips out of my face. Julie Morgan writes. And that person, I'm not even going to say her name. She doesn't deserve that. She won. She got the press. She, she got what she wanted, right? She got a lot of press. And I bet she drove a lot of traffic to her site. I went carnivore. Be, uh, Karen's Corner. I went carnivore because of reactions to veggies and dairy. So I went carnivore as a process of elimination to layer and gut heals. I add back slowly. Wanda Landers, new logo. Food is not love. Hey, thank you, Wanda. Food is not love. Love is love. Food is fuel. Charlotte writes, Lori, put one quarter teaspoon sea salt in a small glass of warm water, drink, and you should be better in a few minutes. These the simple solutions. Food is not love. What causes kidney stones? Keto causes kidney stones? No. No. Can I tell you? 
Can I tell you how many people have kidney stones? I actually live in a part of the country called the kidney stone belt. Can I tell you? Not that many people are keto. It's all about Biscuitville here. Just because something happens when you're following keto, you have to ask yourself, does anyone not following keto get it? Of course they do. I'm not... Okay, thank you, Judy. Um, someone said that my turkey-wrapped bacon was carcinogen, LOL. I said, great, more for me. <laughs> How quickly do you get keto flu? Some people don't, Mona asks. And it's not the flu. It's almost always not a reaction like, you know, people say, I need to eat some carbs because I'm feeling gross. It's almost always sodium that will fix it. Thanks, you, Diane. He hearing you is enough for me. I truly, oh, you're most kind. Hey, Don. Thank you for the super chat. The so called keto flu is very often really, you're feeling lethargic, headachy. Maybe you got pins and needles. This is almost always because of when you start a ketogenic diet, particularly in the beginning, your kidneys flush a lot of fluid. With the fluid goes the sodium. Sodium is the queen of the minerals. So, and they are electrically charged, electrolytes. So with the sodium goes the magnesium, the potassium. Also with the sodium, when you shed sodium, your blood volume drops, which is why people with hypertension that is sodium sensitive, need to watch their sodium intake because if they have too much sodium and they have hypertension, their blood volume increases and this is high blood pressure. But lowered blood volume makes you feel kind of, Ooh, I'm not feeling so good. The solution, get some cheap bouillon that has about a gram of sodium in it, sip on it. I throw some extra spices in there and that almost always regulates it. And I mean quickly. I don't mean like you need to do this for a week. I mean like it almost always regulates it. Hey, Chantel, thank you for the super chat. What am I drinking? Third third and last time. You must have joined late. Casey's pink drink. I'm, I am going to make a hashtag about it. Can't trademark it, unfortunately. It's a glass of ice, diatonic water, a splash of diet cranberry with a little bit of lime. It helps keep my whistle wet since I do so much talking. Hey, Judy. Wish you could be your most kind. Thank you for the super chat. That, that's a stunning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Henrietta Henson, how do we get more research for dementia? Because I'm convinced the brain is eaten away with sugar. Older people eat so much cake. Um, Henrietta, let me tell you my understanding. If you get the chance, listen to lectures or read works by Dr. Georgia Eid, E D. E, Dr. Georgia Eid. She's a psychiatrist. And I'm hoping when I start my podcast, she'll be one of the first people I get to interview. There are those that refer to Alzheimer's as type 3 diabetes. As we know, type 2 diabetes, well, maybe you don't know, type 2 diabetes is when your blood sugar is, is high. At any time, we should have no more than about five grams of glucose in our entire bloodstream at a time. If you have six grams, you're type 2 diabetic. It's very inflammatory. There's something called brain glucose. Glucose can pass the brain blood barrier easily. Insulin, not so much. Insulin is what regulates glucose, among other things. But it does that amongst doing other things. There is some thought and research and talk about the fact that the insulin, so in simplistic terms, the insulin in your brain that you're born with is kind of the entire defense for your brain to regulate brain glucose. That's too simplistic, but let's think of it that way. The glucose is inflammatory. It's burning synapses and dendrites and axions and everything. It's fraying the edges. And there's simply not enough insulin. It's, your brain is flooded with glucose when you're eating the standard American diet. 
So yes, there and there is some research about that. And this is maybe where exogenous ketones can help. Uh, Dr. Mary Newport, listen to her. Her late husband um, suffered from early onset Alzheimer's, and she dosed him with coconut oil. That's therapeutic ketones as opposed to nutritional ketosis. So do those research. Again, Dr. Georgia Ede, E-D-E, and Dr. Mary Newport. Um, what do you know about keto with no gallbladder? This comes up almost every, almost every live stream I do, do. No gallbladder, no thyroid, hyperthyroid, hypothyroid, Hashimoto's, postmenopausal, premenopausal, perimenopausal, post hysterectomy. I'm like half of those things right there. Um, yeah, no gallbladder, not to worry. Thank you, Sean, Casey. Thank you. You've lost 36 pounds. Congratulations. That is fantastic. And thank you for the super chat. You're most kind. Jane Hahn writes, I'm super sensitive to MSG and most store-bought bouillon is high in it. Second or third ingredient listed. While high in salt, it makes me feel so terrible. Homemade broth works for me as well. That's very good. Now, there is a brand. And if um, if one of my patrons who might remember Denise talking about this, there is a brand. Denise lives in California. of Bullion. It might be at Trader Joe's. I can't remember. That has no MSG. MSG because she um, she is sensitive to it as well. Hi, off keto because of electrolyte imbalance, heart palpitations, and muscle cramps. Any advice? Appreciated. Kevin, um, are you self-diagnosing an electrolyte imbalance? And if so, was were your electrolytes low? And if so, the answer is sodium, almost always. If you don't have sodium-sensitive hypertension, um, about five grams a day. You can listen to Dr. Stephen Finney talk about this, but it's the it's the first thing to try to do. Is it's not an imbalance so much as very low sodium can lead and magnesium and potassium go with it, and the muscle cramps and the fatigue and all that. So if you're not a sodium sensitive hypertensive person check out increasing your sodium intake not your salt intake but your sodium intake to about five grams a day and as you correct for the sodium very often the magnesium and potassium correct as well because as one goes the others go uh, listen to this share shane clovis writes keto saved my mom's gallbladder after having stones and thickening of the wall she went keto and the wall thinned to normal and the stones went away. That's a new one on me. That's fantastic to know. Jennifer Angus writes, I have multiple sclerosis. So that was the reason for me starting keto. I have heard carnivore is helpful for autoimmune. So that is why that's what sparks my interest. Um, I will tell you that one of, one of our patrons, Vicki, she's been very transparent, has MS and Hashimoto's and is postmenopausal. And she, uh, she feels like it has greatly enhanced her MS symptoms. And she went, I think she went full on carnivore for at least a month. Himalayan sea salt good? Sodium is sodium. You can, the, the sea salt and all that will bring extra minerals with them. And they are all the rage. But I'll tell you that in our house, pretty much, it's diamond brand kosher salt. But do what you like. Um, Henrietta Hansen, you seem to know about it in America than in England. The English hardly acknowledge keto. We are still thinking low fat is king over here. It really frustrates me. Don't let it frustrate you. Just do your thing. And it is, it can be frustrating, but don't waste any energy on being frustrated. Just do what do, you know, Henrietta, you do what works for you. And you might find that you influence five people around you, whether you know it or not. And that's how it spreads. That's how it's spreading here. Okay, I'm looking. What do you suggest for vegetarian keto? I cannot speak to that echo, but I will refer you um, to reach out or check out the 
the uh, work of um, Jadeep Bhutta, J-A-Y-D-E-E-P Bhutta, B-H-U-T-A. He is a vegetarian uh, for cultural and religious reasons. And he's lost, I don't know, 120 pounds, maybe more. Uh, just Google Jadeep Bhutta and maybe reach out to him and tell him I said, hey, uh, how much salt per day should I take in? Kevin, keep in mind it's not salt, it's sodium because different um, delivery mechanisms for sodium are, are different. Five grams of sodium per day, that includes the food you consume. So if you're enjoying bacon and sausages and you know things like that, those have sodium, but five grams a day. Do check out Stephen Finney, P-H-I-N-N-E-Y. Sharon Mele, hi Casey via San Diego. I faithfully was eating 1400 calories a day, keeping carbs at 20 grams for two months, could not lose weight. Also, I was so tired and couldn't get over it. Oh, I have no idea about calories. Don't let it, uh, keep in mind, if you try to restrict your calories based on some app, it doesn't know you. If you're hungry, eat. Just make sure you're keeping your carbs low. You may need more fuel. If you are, um, if you're tired, that shouldn't be happening. Make sure you're burning fat for fuel. Make sure your carbs are 20 grams total, not net. And frankly, some people need to eat fewer carbs. Some people can get away with more. Some people need to eat fewer. Kevin, I'm looking for a consult. Is there anyone here who I can chat with regards my issue? Me. I mean, I'm not trying to sell anything. You asked the question. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. So you can go to my blog and see the coaching options, telephone and video. Plus, uh, honestly, the more economical thing is to join Patreon. And there's a lot of good information there. $2 a month will get you a lot of information. I crave salt, so have it. Okay, guys, I'm going to start to wind down. Um, I hope you're all doing well where you are. Does anyone have a last question for me specifically? I can't speak to anything other than my own experience and my understanding. Yes, Amy Berger, a friend of mine. Uh, had a lovely evening of cocktails with her a few weeks ago. Um, she has written a book called The Alzheimer's Antidote. The Alzheimer's Antidote. Okay, guys, I'm going to assume that there's not too much else here uh, need. Do you eat any dairy? You're asking me, Chantel? Yes, I do. I love cheese. Now, cheese is not unlimited. A lot of people think, oh, I can eat. As long as I'm sticking to the food list, I can eat anything I want all day long, unlimited. There is nothing unlimited. Ultimately, fuel intake matters in regards to energy output. The thing is, if you listen to your body and don't eat if you're not hungry, it's self-regulating. You don't have to calculate it. Right? You know, it's like if you if you water if you're watering a house plant and it's been super dry in your house, the the pot will absorb as much water as it needs and then it'll start to run out the bottom. If it's been very humid in your house, it will absorb you need to water it less. Listen to your body. And if you're not hungry, don't eat. If you are hungry, eat. Just make sure when you're eating, you're keeping your carbohydrate intake low so that you're burning fat for fuel and not glucose. Mona Tai writes, I had a non-keto 50 pound weight loss, but still need to lose an additional 50 pounds. But I'm now on the low blood sugar side. Is there anything I need to do differently to keep my sugar up? That is, make if, if you're taking medications for blood sugar, then you'll want to make sure you're following a doctor's um, guidance on this. But no, I cannot speak to that because I'm not a doctor. Katie writes, coaching, and I can never find it. Okay, if you go to my blog, caseydurango.com, there's a tab that says coaching, and that's where you can find it. 
And if you still can't find it, go to my blog and just contact me through there. Thank you, guys. How many carbs per day will enable ketosis? Kevin, it depends on the person, but pretty much as a rule across the board, pretty much 20 total grams a day or fewer. That's kind of general. Some people can tolerate more. Some need less. But 20 is a pretty good baseline. Texas Native writes, thanks for the positive thoughts and candid stories. Okay, guys. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for the super chats. Thank you for show, allowing me to be part of your Saturday. Stay safe. I know a lot of people are it's going to be cold, and I hope you don't lose power. I hope we don't lose power. And um, God willing, and the creek don't rise, I'll be back here Saturday next week. I do want to give a shout out to patrons at patreon.com slash gokitawithkasey.com, which is where I spend most of my time. I am privileged to do this as well, though. Thank you very much. Have a great one.